I remember getting a phone call that morning that Cameron had killed himself. And it really didn't hit me until after the funeral. It was more, I felt bad for my family, my cousin who is his god dad in California, having to come in and deal with all of this. I remember sitting on my couch probably a week after the funeral, just asking Cameron why he did it, not understanding what the motive was or why he did it. A lot of people said, oh, that can't happen to my family. That can't happen to my family. And sure enough, it happened to my family. I would have never guessed that it would have happened to him for everything he had going for him, but you never really know what's going on under the surface. So I remember a party we had that summer and I just remember him sitting there with his girlfriend and I was just making fun of him. Hey, you gotta stop getting tall because he's was as tall as me, but he had a, a light behind him that was just awesome. He can light up a room walking into it. Being sad is one thing and it's just, oh, you know, I lost my dog today. That That is sad. But when you have the depression, it's almost like having demons take over your mind and, and it's telling you what to do and how to think. And it's so different and so hard to deal with compared to just being sad. I have anxiety, depression, and ADHD. I've always felt that I had anxiety and depression growing up, but this past year, I was diagnosed with those three. Uh, dealing with it as a teen, it's not something anybody talked about. It wasn't prevalent to be like, hey, I have depression, I have anxiety, you know, I have thoughts of committing suicide or anything like that. It was a completely different era. I do know that my friends, after writing the suicide letter as a teen, my friends went to the principal and the principal was like, uh, he's good, he has friends. He's fine, there's no reason for to worry about him. And to think about now, if I was in school, who knows what would happen if my principal said that. Maybe I might not be here, I don't know. People shouldn't just take it lightly. Teachers need to know signs and, and know how to help. February 22nd of 22, I just got done directing Rent, the musical, which is a huge part of my childhood growing up. Something just triggered inside and I don't know if it was the, the demons taken over, I don't know, but I needed something, I needed help. I've asked a friend of mine, hey, should I admit myself? And they were reluctant, they were like, I think you're good, but not like 20 years ago when they said you're good, you have friends. So that night I went to a local restaurant and was having a few drinks and all I was doing is, is numbing the pain and I knew something was wrong because of my anxiety was up, my heart was pounding, I was sweating, I was cold, my mind was racing a mile a minute, wouldn't stop. So I made some phone calls. They were like, you need to pay and go to the hospital. So I went, drove myself there. So when I got to the hospital, it was powerful because they were there to help. So I went, told them what I was going to do. They put me in the back, basically took everything off of me and kept me there for five days and got meds in my system and regulated them. And I wouldn't be here if I didn't have the meds in my system. It keeps me calm. I'm not blown off the handle for any little thing now. It's a game that you play with your head that if you're sitting there or, or whatever you may be doing and you have the, like I said before, the demons try to take over your, your thoughts. It's how can you challenge them and, and get them to, to go away and think better thoughts than what they're putting in your head. I know growing up, I've been working since I was 11. And when I graduated high school, I worked two, three jobs at a time. So I always kept myself busy. And now that I'm not working so many jobs, it kind of let the, the demons take over. I think twice before I do things. Do I want to go out? Do I want to go to the store? Do I want to go hang out with friends? Because a lot of it just affects my mood. If I'm in a good mood, I'll go out. If I'm gonna kind of want to hibernate my room I stay in so it really just depends on that what I want to do and how I kind of manage that if that doesn't happen I try to keep myself busy I, I draw I do some artwork stuff like that I mean if you were considering please get help talk to someone there's so many resources out there that can help you I tell my friends hey 
say pineapple in a text message and I'm there to talk to you. I'm a great ear to listen to, but don't do it. You're gonna leave a lot of people behind and it will affect them a hell of a lot more than it affects you. Seek help. That's not who you are. That's just something that's gonna make you stronger. So don't be afraid to talk to people and, and seek what you're looking for. In adolescence, you're developing social and emotional habits and different skills. So there's a lot of things that affect how you perform and how you think about different things from peer pressure to impact from your friends, stress in school, and social media as well. Uh, social media is definitely a different influence from prior years because you have immediate negative interactions that uh, occur quite frequently in some cases. So one of the main good coping strategies would be surrounding yourself with positive friends and family. Um, people that can support you when you're in a spot where you need help. But also stress management, so things like healthy eating habits, sleeping on a regular schedule, drinking plenty of water, exercising, all of those things help manage what you're going through. And then if you don't have coping mechanisms, that's when you have to know that spot to ask for more and get help from a professional. Openly talking with others is the main thing, talking with your friends and family, and just talking about mental health. When you're talking about mental health, language matters, so talking in a positive way so that people are aware of what's going on because really, if you look at a classroom and probably about six out of 30 people have some kind of thing that they're struggling with, so it is around us. And also, you can fight that stigma by not having a stigma of yourself. A lot of people are very open to other people having mental health issues, but when they look at themselves, it's very hard for them to talk about themselves. So being aware that you are a positive influence for other people, that could change the whole way that people look at mental health. Listening is the main thing. Listening to what someone's saying, because everybody is at different stages of their acceptance in different topics, especially mental health is such a broad topic from we're talking about depression, anxiety, um, to even suicidal ideation. So listening where that person's at and how you can help them and support them is the best way to handle that. If anybody is struggling with destructive thoughts or thoughts of self-harm, they can always call 988 and that is a hotline that can help and provide assistance for that person.